collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with union personnel. We will come out of executive session at or around 7 p.m. to start the regular agenda. I have a motion to enter into executive session. Make a motion that we enter into executive session. You got to read this thing. Oh. The, um, you got to read that okay. Make a motion we go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and reconvene an open session specifically relating to the student officer pay issue. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Take a roll. Yes. 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 Okay. Welcome back, everybody. It's uh, 10 minutes after 7. Um, I'll run through the agenda real quick. Uh, 7 o'clock, citizens input. Topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair. 48 hours in advance of the meeting. 7.05, selectmen's update. 7.10, Chris Gallagher, Gabby Jordan, Town Engineer Planning Department. Discussion, vote to complete subdivision on Sullivan Way. 7.15, NPS LLC, public hearing, UMass Football. 7.25, NPS LLC, public hearing, Patriots Games. 7.35, Waxy O'Connors, change of manager and operational update. 7.50, Mass Electric National Grid, public hearing, transmission line franchise rights, Route 106, reconductoring. 8 o'clock, Mass Electric National Grid, public hearing, sub-transmission lines, the Union Loop. 8.10, Moe's Southwest Grill, 265 Patriot Place, new food establishment, common Hollers, call victuals. Victuals license. Oh, excuse me. Uh, 820, William Keegan, discussion on common sign program. 830, 16 Washington Street, LLC, discussion vote commercial parking permit, lot 16. 840, William Keegan, town manager update. Uh, Bill, can you lead us in? Uh, sure. Lead us in? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A little after 7.10, is there any citizens that would like to approach the board? Come to the microphone and state your name, please. National Night Out. It will be happening on August 4th from 6 to 9. And I have um, the letter for you folks, as well as maybe a proclamation if you could um, do at your next meeting. Um, and the license and things like that for the comments. So, um, but I just wanted to give everybody a heads up that. Um, We'll be doing it again. The fun for the kids will be the bounce house, a DJ, um, an animal petting zoo, face painting, free ice cream while it lasts. Um, Pat Patriot will lead the Safety Glow Parade. Um, this year we have four information tables. Partners Health will be there, Norfolk DA, the Foxborough Citizens Corp, Office and Chamberlain and Molly the Canine Dog. Um, hugs, Foxborough Human Services, Learn to Cope, um, TAM, which is the addict's mom. We are shooting to try to get ADT, which is actually a national sponsor of National Night Out. Um, also, we would like to do the drug take back as well as the shoppies take back. Um, and RAFT, the uh, committee that we're trying to raise. Uh, in Foxborough here for raising addiction awareness for Foxborough team. They're hoping to have a table there this time. And um, so nationally, it's the 32nd year of it. Um, Foxborough's been participating for 17 years. So um, I'll just pass these out to you folks, and hopefully you can put it on your agenda for the 21st. Okay. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Anybody got any questions? What do you need from us besides putting it on the agenda? Well, I need an okay to use the common. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's 
going to be on the agenda for us to discuss it, so we'll do it next time. Well, there you go. Thanks, Lynn. So any other questions? Nope. nope. We can talk about it. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. Great. Anybody else? Okay. We just need to uh, okay. put those. Being 715, uh, selectmen's update. Um, I don't know if anybody made it out to uh, Patriot Place uh, on Saturday to finish at the 50. Um, it was pretty impressive. It was uh, well attended. I know the businesses up at Patriot Place did a, did a really good business that day. Uh, a lot of people uh, in the restaurants, a lot of people around. And from a public safety standpoint, I don't think there was, there was any issues. Uh, but it was it was a great event. So. I didn't make it up, but I heard uh, had a few people in my office that ran in the race, and they it was the first time they did, and uh, they okay. said it was awesome. They said the course was great. Um, so everybody liked They're it. Still taking oxygen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had somebody fly up from Texas to run in it. So good. Well, let's Excellent. see if we can promote it and yeah. make it bigger next year. Um, anybody have anything? No. Mm -hmm. uh, 710, Chris Gallagher, Gabby Jordan, uh, discussion vote to complete subdivision on Sullivan Way. All right. So um, you guys should have a few things in front of you. One's just a, a brief memo from myself um, and a quote from Ian Brown Landscaping and then an uh, completion spec from 2012 so this is autumn autumn valley estates which is Sullivan way um, off of chestnut street down towards the cocasa street end um, the developer um, forego finishing the project so the bond was was pulled um, the money was was given to the town uh, in march of 2014 so a little over almost a year and a half ago now um, Similar to Carlton and Clarenton, as we did last last year, um, I'll work with with Gabby to complete the subdivision. The majority of this is landscape work, um, as you'll see from the quote from Ian Brown and the spec from from Sharon in 2012. I don't have a copy of the spec. Did you guys get one? Well, mine. Okay. It was, yeah, it wasn't in my package. Just the cover letter? Yeah, just the cover letter. What's behind that? Nothing. Oh, okay. No, just the quote and the cover letter. Okay. okay. I can go through it quick just so everybody has a, an idea. Um, in 2012, Sharon put together a, a seven item list um, for landscape issues. Um, there were a lot of street trees that um, were insufficient. Um, you know, she had listed four plus an additional weeping um, cherry tree on an abutting property that was taken down um, during the construction. Um, the landscape around the center island, Sullivan Way has a, a very large wooded center island with a wood guardrail surrounding it. There was never really any good grass there. Didn't really grow, so she had put in to pull all the weeds out, reloom, reseed. Um, along with that would be um, all the trees through that subdivision doing a nice mulch bed around all the trees, taking care of any of the, the dead limbs, any of the, um, the growth coming off the trees that, that shouldn't be there. Um, and then there's an open space path around that subdivision. They did it as an open space development through planning board. So there's, a, there's an open space all the way around that subdivision behind all the properties. The path from the street to that open space was never completed. So there's roughly 90 feet of blue stone set in the grass between two of the properties, between 17 and 19, and we'll need to complete that the rest of the, the other 90 feet, 100 feet, all the way to that open space. Um, and then it was mowing the, the, the retention base in that large center island, um, cleaning up all the dead trees that, were, that had fallen through there. Um, and then some other things, sweeping the road, cleaning the catch basins, uh, some of the stuff that we'll do prior to acceptance. So I had a 
a landscaper come out, give me a quote on the on the project. He's the same landscaper I used to complete Carlton Lane last last fall. Uh, that subdivision had 20 street trees to be planted over there. Uh, going through this with Dave Laliberti, uh, the tree and park supervisor, the landscaper, and myself, we came up with 10 trees, street trees that should be replaced, that are just insufficient for the neighborhood. Um, they don't match what's there. Um, he'll do all the landscape clean up around the center island, and then do that weeping cherry out towards the front on the abutting property. On top of that, it came up a week ago that there was a buffer put in along the right side of the street as you pull onto Sullivan's Way so that the, the property on that corner would have a buffer so that they weren't getting headlights going into their living room every night. Um, that buffer didn't, didn't last. So we're going to work with that neighbor to find out you know, whether a, a fence is appropriate there or whether we do some more trees um, further back off the road. Um, you know, on the on the berm that's there. So I'm here to, to um, you know, answer any questions and, and get your approval to move forward of spending up to twenty five thousand dollars to complete this landscape, um, which would leave us roughly twenty thousand to do all the the final work, the um, leading up to the acceptance. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you're asking is, uh, we have to give permission for you to spend the money from the, from the bond. Correct. That's what you're here tonight. Correct. But um, in the future, once these things are done, the mulching and all of that, the residential association <laughs> is responsible for that, right? Our there, my understanding is there's no association there, and the town's actually been doing the maintenance. We've been doing the mulling through there now. Um, you know, the tree and park is, has been doing that maintenance over the last couple of years. We haven't put any funding into it besides manpower. But so if, if that's an open, is that an open space residential? It don't, is. Don't they usually have an association, a they, residential association to take not care all, of that? Not in all subdivisions. They, they, a lot of the, uh, there are so, several new ones that are, that have that. Right. Now, but not, this, this one, one does not. This one, my understanding was <laughs> roughly 10 years ago when this went through planning board. So, so the town's going to be responsible for mulching that, that area and stuff? We'll do it once now with the capital funds, and then we'll treat it as any other any other street tree that, that we have. Um, Meaning no mulch? They, they take right. care of it from there on. The, the, right. the people the living, living <coughs> residents. Residents, residents. Residents. okay. Yeah. There was no pr provisions in the uh, planning board decision for the for formation the, of an association to not maintain that, that open Not space. that I know of, no. Do the, do the residents realize that once the, the work is done, then really the town isn't to, to keep it really nice? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be up to them because I, right. I would not want them to be coming back, you know, a right. year and a half, two, three years saying, hey, where's my mulch? Right. No, and that's, yeah. that's we will make that clear. Um, you know, we'll, we'll notify. This work is where this is all plantings. We won't do this work until the fall. So I'll do some, some reach out to, to the residents in the neighborhood and let them know what we're planning to do and let them know what the um, after effects are going to be. And can you make sure that's in writing and yes. give them copies yep. so that everybody's on the Yeah, I'll page. make sure everybody gets a copy of it and, mm -hmm. um, you know, Gabby and I will work on the, the wording on that and, and make sure everybody knows and then what's going to happen up you're, there. You're confident that the $20,000 remaining will be sufficient to finish the remaining work? Yeah. There's really, it's, it's minimal. There's some engineering plans that will need to be done, um, you know, the acceptance plans, but that, that should be, the 20,000 will be sufficient to cover that. And, and once this is done, would this be, would there be a petition at, at town meeting to, for this to be an accepted road, or is this already an accepted road? It's not accepted. It's under planning board control because the, the developer defaulted on the, the project. So in reality, the town, the town owns it. Okay. It's just not an accepted way at this point in time. So but we're plowing it. We plow it. Yeah. But but will we have to go through a uh, town meeting? Will yes. it be part of the, it will be, the yep. future? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the purpose now is to try and get it to the point where it can be accepted. Accepted. Okay. Uh, we're just finishing up the final requirements of it. Right. Have you gotten any other bids? Um, there was one in the planning board file from 2012 that was close to 35000 Okay. Um, so knowing, having that number from three years ago, and then knowing the, the quality that Ian Brown puts forward, 
um, and knowing that you know I worked with him last year, that the trees alone that he brought in were are well worth the money. Yeah, um, no, I'm not. I mean, the money looks fine, but yeah. um, okay. Chapter 30B laws don't you have to get three sealed bids? So, because this is bond money, it's oh. not town funding. Oh, town funds. We don't have to go through that procurement process. Oh, okay. Okay. It's the rare occasion when we get to handpick. Okay. All right. Who we yeah. Wanna, no. The, who we the work with. I wasn't questioning his prices right. at all. Yep. I know his work. His work is good, but I just wanted to make sure that sure we were following all the right. right yeah, and I, I I made sure I cleared that with the um, you know Inspector General's office, the Finance okay. Director, and, and Bill as well. So um, we're in the clear on that. Chris, has this developer done any other uh, developments in the town of Foxborough? Um, and do you think he will be doing? I like he's change? he's not doing anything currently. Um, His bond will be higher. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's he's he doesn't currently have any projects open with the town. So I'm not sure what's what's he's done in the past, but I know there's nothing open with the planning board now. Okay, but he has a record of of not of failing. I in, believe in, so. In, okay. So we have to take a vote to uh, approve yes. this funding. Okay. And motion and would be in order at this point to allow for the uh, okay. expenditure of, of bond funds up to the amount of $25,000. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that um, we make an expenditure of bond funds for Sullivan Way in the amount of up to $25,000. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? Oh, just one more question. The, the residents of Sullivan Way are... are I uh, realize what what's happening, and they're they're okay with it. Yes. Yeah, I've been through there a few different times. I've had have several neighbors come out and speak to me about it, and um, we'll make sure before we do any of this work that um, they'll all have notification of the pr the plan moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Jim. Okay. Um, we have a motion. It was seconded. Uh, vote in the affirmative. Aye. 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 Carries four nothing. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay. It's now almost 7.30, uh, 7.15, MPS LLC, public hearing, UMass football. I'll read the notice. Board of Selectin, Selectmen acting as local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 181 and Section 183A, and Chapter 136, Section 4. Town of Foxborough revised general bylaws, Article 5, Section 6, and also stadium rules and regulations will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, July 7, 2015, beginning at approximately 7.15 in the Foxborough High School Media Center, 120 South Street, to review the application submitted by NPS LLC for the 2015 University of Massachusetts regular season home games. These events are proposed for Gillette Stadium. Application for these events is on file at the Office of the Selectmen. All interested parties are welcome to attend. State your name for the record. Jess Hinos with Gillette Stadium. Welcome back. Thank you. So uh, here to license the 2015 UMass Amherst football season. We are in uh, year four of our five-year deal with the university, and uh, we're down to three, three games a season now. So we're asking for September 19th, October 24th, and uh, November 7th. For the most part, uh, actually, everything really is the same as it has been in, in the previous three seasons. We are estimating about 12,000 uh, attendance-wise, in that we found varies greatly based on the weather. Uh, we're asking for 3 p.m. start times again. Ticket prices have remained the same as well. So they're at uh, 50, 25, and then 10 as a group and student rate. We are requesting gates an hour and a half before kickoff. Um, there's no, there really aren't any significant changes to the plan. There will be a band day, which is typically the, the most highly attended game. We'll have uh, a taste of Amherst, and again, which the Board of Health works with uh, the different bodies from Amherst who are going to come in and set up and set up their um, their food for the students to come in. And they work through the whole permitting process and all the food transportation with Pauline Clifford, and she's been a huge help in the previous years. Uh, and they'll also have the Minute Fan Park area, which is the sort of fan engagement zone that they set up outside of CBS scene, and it has some inflatable elements for younger kids. Um, it has a Jimmy Buffett cover band, and they distribute um, 
like UMass pom poms and maroon and white lays and just sort of spirit style gear for fans as they enter the stadium. So there really, like I said, there aren't any uh, really significant changes and, and even the ongoing stadium construction really won't impact their operation either. As of right now, there isn't a plan to operate either the Cross Pavilion uh, or the Optum Lounge and there won't be a need for the um, employee parking lots either. Um, George, how did the uh, advisory committee? Uh, we reviewed it. We didn't see any issues with it. I guess the, the, the way they're looking to handle it is just the half, one half of the stadium, the east half, and uh, the fire department uh, be at a level one, and uh, Chief O'Leary uh, will uh, use details based on the staffing levels that he feels. So we had no issue and recommend to you for approval. How many games was it last year? Was it five? It was four last four? year, I believe, yeah. Okay. So let's slowly tapering back. Are they playing their home games somewhere else? or? Uh, they're playing some still at the university, and they're transitioning right now, and I'm not completely up on all of the details of what they're doing, but they're tra trying to transition in between conferences, but uh, they don't have a bid. So not entirely sure what the university's direction is for the okay. football so program. So it's three games this year? Then, it's right. just three games, yeah. Okay. The stadium is, I think it's complete now. The new, the new up stadium. Up in Amherst? In Amherst. Is, 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 it was nearly completion yeah. last year. The, uh, I think they were still working on some of the road work and just the general civil infrastructure that they needed to upgrade in order okay. to be able to host uh, D1. But you had mentioned um, that ongoing construction shouldn't be affected. When is the all the construction supposed to be done? At so everything uh, is on target right now. So the main sort of projects are our employee lot, which is scheduled to be opened for Taylor Swift at the end of this month. Uh, and then the bridge construction, which if you were to go to an event now, you'd see that whole space is open and accessible, but there's still a small footprint that sort of um, wraps around the lighthouse. And there's a few, I want to say there's about 10 to 15 seats there. Uh, and then there's some square footage that's still under construction, but that's scheduled to be open for the first preseason game. Um, Optum Lounge and Cross Pavilion both are on schedule to be open for preseason football. So okay. it's uh, everything right now is on schedule. Good. Um, Chief O'Leary, Chief Hatfield, any comments, concerns? Hey, George, the report was pretty accurate for us. They end up opening up the west side for the visiting team. We, we might scale a few people in there, depending on the size of the people that are attending that side. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Do you have to open it up to the public? Anybody? We do. Yeah, it's public hearing. Anybody from the public have anything to say on it? Yeah, make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Discussion? No. No. Looks okay. like uh, pretty much a rubber stamp on this one. Okay. You gonna make a, 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 a yep. motion? I make a motion that we approve the three UMass Amherst games for Gillette Stadium. Do I need to put the dates in? Yep. Uh, September 19th, October 24th, and November 7th, all 2015. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having <laughs> me again. Okay, <laughs> uh, 735 uh, MPS LLC public hearing Patriots games. Okay, the Board of Selectmen acting as the local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 181, and Section 183A, and Chapter 136, Section 4, Town of Foxborough Revised General Bylaws, Article 5, Section 6 and also stadium rules and regulations will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, July 7, 2015, beginning at 7.25 p.m. in the Foxborough High School Media Center to review the application submitted by NPS LLC for the 2015 New England Patriots regular season home games, including preseason and potential home playoff games and resident open training camp session. These events are proposed for Gillette Stadium. Application for these events events is on file at the Office of the Selectmen. All interested parties are welcome to attend. So 2015 season, um, we're obviously really excited to get things started. So we're asking for 
10 home games, including the preseason, and then hopefully two home playoff games as well. Um, as far as this year's changes, there's no significant change in, in pricing. Tickets are anywhere between $65 and $195. We're requesting the same gate opening times, the same lot opening times, so that's uh, gates two hours before kickoff and parking lots four hours before kickoff. We will have a variety of start times, 1 p.m., 4, 25 p.m., and then 8.30 p.m. as well. The NFL is going to continue with the flex scheduling, so anytime after uh, October 11th, they have the ability to change the start time, the kick time, the kickoff of your game uh, with two weeks notice. So uh, it, it has happened a couple of times in, in previous seasons. If a game is more in demand than anticipated, it could get bumped to a prime time slot. But they do require to give us two full weeks notice. Um, so I had briefly touched upon it when we were discussing UMass, but we do have a lot of ongoing construction and sort of in-stadium in enhancements going on. Um, Optum Lounge, which is a private space for about a thousand people, um, that is a, an opt-in program where our current season ticket holder had the ability to purchase a pass. It's located at the field level, so it provides a really unique uh, game day experience. So that's that, and that space is, is sold out. The Cross Pavilion, which is located in the north end zone, similar capacity. Uh, that will be operated as a, a private pregame event, and then with gates, it will open to the general public and just serve as a, a high end concession point. And the DraftKings space, which is also in the back to the south end zone, um, it will operate as a, another high end concession stand, and it'll be a, a space with a lot of um, digital media so that fans can go in there and sort of get current on all of their fantasy scores across whatever leagues they might be participating in. So those are the, the sort of in-stadium enhancements that we have going on. We will be operating our employee lot. Um, it'll be good to, that we'll have a couple of concerts under our belt. We'll have two Taylor Swift dates, two Kenny Chesney dates, um, as well as the ACDC concert to sort of begin to work the kings out and, and get everybody accustomed to the new arrangement. Um, along with the lots, we do have a new space in place for all of our employee check-in. So that should run uh, smoothly now that everybody will be boarding buses, being bused into one location, and then checking in at one location, and then being distributed to whichever um, sections of the stadium that they're working in. Uh, we are going to continue with full body scanners. I believe we have 77, as well as the full bag check. Um, Chief O'Leary and our head of security traveled down to the NFL security hearings. Um, we, we follow all the standards that the NFL puts in place, um, and then we also go above and beyond with our own. We take a great deal of pride in that. And I think that covers just about everything in the application. I'm assuming you guys probably have some questions. Um, George, comments from the State uh, Advisory Committee? Yes. we. Actually, uh, I want to thank Chief O'Leary who comes to uh, our meetings, but gave us a thorough briefing on you know how the changes and how they impact uh, um, his organization as well as the potential public safety. Um, with the, he'll have more detailed uh, officers that'll be at the lots, mm -hmm. and um, as well as at uh, the the two lounges in the pavilion or, or the lounge in the pavilion. So um, it. Uh, it, that uh, doesn't seem to be an issue, although it's new. You know, and uh, I'm sure it's something that's going to be looked at uh, uh, extensively. Uh, the attendance is down to 64,379, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, uh, probably down, what, 3,000, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire department uh, EMS is going to staff at a level, at a level four. <laughs> and uh, the police, obviously, based on you know the modifications uh, uh, will, but they feel uh, the chief felt very comfortable that he would be able to provide uh, the manpower that was necessary. That uh, it, you know the additional manpower. Um, again, we were pleased. The full body scans is something that just uh, this year they, yeah. they you know went uh, absolutely um, you know 100 percent. And um, the the one thing that. Uh, came up is in relation to the North Street, uh, no parking and standing. The chief is going to have a re-emphasis uh, with new signage, uh, trying to stop people from even, you know, from standing to discourage the people that were, you know, waiting for people or uh, what have you. So that is something that uh, he's working on and will be 
those, looking those at. Signs are, are up. Those signs are up. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and there is a Foxborough Day uh, practice, the 31st of July. It's a Friday night. That um, you know is uh, you know, people no charge tickets and. It's an infield practice, mm -hmm. in, in stadium, field, in stadium practice. Um, so, thank you for that. And that uh, you know, looking forward to seeing the changes and how they're going to impact. Yeah. So. Uh, Chief O'Leary, you want to give us any updates of NFL mandated security changes and how it's going to impact uh, your operations? Prior to the, the meeting I attended with uh, Mark Briggs, uh, the NFL had developed uh, 28 best practices as part of a guide that has been certified by Homeland Security uh, and review so that the entire NFL follows these practices. Uh, two have come about as a result of the ownership meeting and they were introduced. Uh, primarily, they don't have an impact on uh, policing and a fire service but it's uh, situations that the club itself has to take on certain improvements in terms of staffing and communication uh, and I know that in talking with Mr. Briggs those are projects that are on the forefront of what they're doing internally again to improve the safety and security for the fans uh, people in the uh, parking lots around it as well as our residents as a follow-through right and, and I'm sure you went down there and showed the NFL how, how it's done right right uh, it would be very challenging <laughs> there are quite a few people that uh, uh, run very similar operations to ours they, they might be a little bigger communities and mm -hmm. have a few hundred more people to do it with <laughs> but uh, we're very competitive in that area so all of those 28 new best practices are in place, will be in place at Gillette and throughout the league? Actually, uh, the 28 are the pre-existing ones okay. that have been developed over time. Uh, they've introduced two more, so there'll actually be 30 okay. uh, that they'll be following up on. Uh, Ms. Stevenson talked about the, uh, the additional walkthrough magnetometers. Uh, they were tested at the UBIG gate in particular, and that was always a gate that would back up as people are walking northbound along Route 1, come to that gate. Uh, and we would have backups literally to one of the pedestrian bridges uh, in a, a high crowd problem area. And the speed that we're able to get people through at the same time, identifying people that have left something in their pocket uh, was exceptional yeah. and that methodology will be at all of our main gates which makes it easier for the fan to get in so they have a chance at seeing kickoff uh, so it's a, a great addition to the overall security plan great. thank you Any comments from the board George I did notice um, kind of struck a little unusual that the advisory committee voted six to one um, can we elaborate on on the one? Uh, sure. Uh, one of the one of the people felt that based on um, there not being a decision on whether uh, uh, Mr. Brady was going to play, and uh, the potential security plan, if he didn't uh, that first night, uh, he reserved and, and didn't want to vote in the affirmative. Interesting. Yeah, one quick question, slightly um, to do with this, but we talked about the reduction of uh, it's roughly about 5,000 seats. Have there been any further discussions on well, it? Was, it's not 5,000 seats. 25, I, it's 25. under 2,000, I believe. Mm -hmm. I, is the it was final 2,500. That, well, that was, that was the initial estimate, but it's actually under, two, under 2,000 now. Yeah. Because they actually what happened was that they, they built the new venue and then they built, put seats back in around it. <coughs> so it's actually, it's under about 1,800, yes. is I believe, is that the number, mm -hmm. the final number now? Oh, because so I, I had, because on the uh, UMass uh, petition, it's 
69,000, then it drops down to uh, 64,000. I just did subtraction, so. Yeah, but there was. Oh, yeah. the, I, th I think that that could also be because with UMass, we just licensed the entire building plus uh, some standing room seats. Yeah. UMass will never get to that capacity, but that's, I think oh, yeah, that yeah. those seats yeah. are actually included. Those, those okay. No, seats it's just that we, we promised ourselves that we'd follow up on that. Right. Um, and uh, this was hoping that we are. Okay. Actually, I, I would like that as an agenda item for a future meeting because that has to do with um, what we're talking about is an issue of, of uh, real estate taxes, you know, because it's, it's based on uh, per ticket, which is per seat. So if you're taking out seats from the stadium, that means we're, we're, we're losing money in regard to real the uh, payment in lieu of taxes, um, and so I'd, I'd like to have a, a uh, discussion of that at uh, in as an agenda item to find out because I I know you talked about this ca this came up for the alteration of premises for mm -hmm. the and at that point we weren't voting on that but you said you were going to be discussing it with uh, Randy and um, and probably Dan Murphy or, so, or somebody. And, you know, what's the discussion? What's been decided? And because I think, I think it's important because what it is is it's setting precedent. Mm -hmm. removing, yeah, again, again, removing I don't, this seats. has nothing to do with licensing the Patriot yeah. season. No, I just want no, to bring yeah. it up make sure it's still a topic for discussion. Yeah, no, no. That's why I'd like to have it as an agenda item. Yeah, it is, and um, do we haven't reached final resolution of that discussion point, so I, I'm not in a position to say that we, we, we you know, I can give you a final answer on that. But... Um, but they, I can tell you that uh, there is a difference of opinion over, over whether or not that's a chargeable issue or not, and so I, we're looking at try, look, looking at ways to try and resolve that if we can. Well, well, I think yeah, because so. it's a because it's a tax issue and it affects taxpayers. We pay right. at, you know taxpayers and payment lower taxes. I think that it's a discussion worth having in public. Let's do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, motion this thing. Is anybody from the yeah, public? Any, anybody from the public have any comments? Make a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 2015 New England Patriots regular season, 10 home games, including preseason and potentially two home playoff games, as well as the resident open training camp session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just shy of 7.50. Uh, Waxy O'Connor's change of manager and operational update. Frank. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Attorney Frank Splain here for uh, Waxy's Mass LLC. Uh, doing business as Waxy O'Connor's. Um, do you have to read any legal notice or anything like that? Is that all done? It's not, a, um, it's not a public hearing. Okay. Um, we filed a uh, petition with the board for a change of uh, uh, the manager on the local licenses for Waxy O'Connor's at uh, 121 Main Street here in Foxborough. Uh, with me here tonight is uh, Julie Doherty, who um, is a requested new manager, as uh, well as uh, Albert uh, Karnbach, who is the uh, last approved manager. Also with me is uh, Paul McKenna, uh, one of the owners uh, of Waxy's. Um, last December, uh, we were in front of this board uh, to get Alfred approved as the new manager of record on the liquor licenses for um, uh, Waxy's. Um, during that hearing it was uh, talked about that um, Alfred was going to be approved for a six-month period at the end of the six-month period we have to come back um, to either get Albert uh, reappointed 
or we had hoped by that time uh, to have a new manager on site, which Julie is. Um, during that time, during the six months, Albert has been uh, working at the Waxies. Um, uh, it's been going well, and uh, Julie has been here since uh, April of this year. Um, as the application indicates, uh, Julie has also worked at other Waxies. Um, she uh, began with Waxies in Lexington as the function manager, uh, worked there for about a year, then moved up to Keene, New Hampshire to be the general manager up there uh, for approximately uh, two years, and then um, was the manager in Woburn, Mass. Um, September 2013 to November 2014. And she's been here with us uh, since April of this year. Uh, she's never been on a, uh, on a liquor license before as a manager, but was general manager both up in um, Keene and Woburn. Uh, during her time as a manager there, there was no violations at any time. She currently lives uh, in Mansfield, even though the application said she was living in Hyannis, which she was at the time we filed but she has since moved to um, Mansfield. She'll be spending uh, 40 to 50 hours a week at the location. Uh, she is uh, well aware of uh, previous issues, violations um, that this location has had. She's reviewed all of the selectmen's meeting from uh, last year with regard to Alfred's appointment, as well as the uh, violations that occurred back then, as well as reading the minute minutes. Um, she's also looked at the uh, settlement agreements uh, that have occurred between Waxies and uh, the Board of Selectmen for past violations, and uh, she and I have gone through um, all those issues, so she's well aware of that. Also with her prior employment with uh, Waxies, she was um, um, somewhat aware of some of the issues that were going on here. She has met with the uh, police chief and um, talked about a lot of those types of issues. Um, but at this time, what I'd like to do with uh, the board's permission is I'd just like to give Albert um, a few minutes to tell the board what's been going on uh, for the past six months and then just ask uh, Julie to, uh, to speak to the board for a moment. Is that all right? Thank you. Alfred? Okay. Um, since December, we have um, instituted Thank you. Um, alcohol awareness policies. We now have an uh, employee handbook with an alcohol awareness policy in it that every new employee is orientated um, and review the alcohol awareness policy. And we have the new employees signing a uh, paper acknowledging that they did review it with the manager upon hire. Um, we've had meetings in December, January, March, and May with all front of the house staff, waitress, waitresses and bartenders to discuss alcohol awareness as, among, as well as other policies. We um, also now do orientations on managers where we discuss alcohol awareness and responsible vending and uh, we have managers sign the acknowledgement page that they too were sat down and talked to. We um, spoke to security that we have Fridays and Saturday nights at, at the pub to again raise everyone's awareness that uh, we're not going to be serving any minors and to be um, steadfast and sticking to our, our plans there. And uh, we've had no violations at all. The uh, culture in the restaurant is very positive. The um, staff understands that uh, um, checking IDs is top priority for us. And we talk about it pretty regularly at the beginning of every shift about everybody paying attention during the shift. How's business been? I mean, you get it, uh, one question I have to ask, you know that sign out on uh, uh, 95, is that, do you know if that's directing any traffic your way? Um, a little bit. Okay. I think but it's good, the one down the on hopes uh, were that it, that, mechanic. That it was. And, yeah, and I think, I think it is. I think that uh, Julie in the three months that she's been there has done a great job. It's, uh, building cells and um, staffing the restaurant up with, the, with new employees and I'm, I'm pretty excited with the direction it's headed. So are you, you're, you're pulling, you're being pulled out of that location but you're still going to oversee yes, I'm that, out of that along location. with other, yes. other locations? Mm -hmm. So you'll still be involved but on the periphery? 
Yeah, right now uh, with uh, Julie's there for all the time, 50 hours a week, I'm, I'm probably in there once or twice a week, which I'll continue to do in the foreseeable future. Well, one of the things they also did, um, Alfred did, was in uh, January they um, hired an assistant uh, manager, so additional uh, management staff to oversee it. So not only Alfred was there, uh, they had an assistant manager who was still with them. Is that correct? Yes. And another location. We brought an assistant general manager in January mm -hmm. in, yep. in Foxborough, mm -hmm. and she worked there January through, through April until uh, Julie got there. So, Alfred, is your function to go to all the uh, waxies like once a week, or is it just for, for the near future you'll be just going to Foxborough? All the waxies. So, so that that's your, mm -hmm. that's your function. Okay. Now, are you are you participating in the the Fox Cares group? Yes, I am. I think I've seen you at those meetings. I, you. Mi <laughs> I missed <laughs> one meeting because I got the date messed up on my calendar. I showed up at the Renaissance Hotel and they were like, "You missed it." It was uh, last week. Um, but besides that one, I've made every Fox Care meeting. And Waxy's is going to continue to participate? Yes, Julie, we have a meeting next week. Julie will be introduced at that meeting, and uh, we'll be participating with Fox Care as well. Good. Excellent. Thank you. If I could, I'd just like to ask Julie just to uh, talk a little bit about some of the things she's been she's been doing the short time she's been there. Um, yeah, we've done a lot of hiring. We brought on um, a couple of new managers. Um, after a long search, we were able to get... Um, very experienced kitchen manager who we're very excited about a new chef. Um, we've also brought on what we're calling right now, we have to come up with a title, <laughs> an alcohol compliance door security person. Um, this gentleman is a former Marine and he also has a background in um, corporate security for restaurants. He, we've added him back on you know we were going back and forth about the thursday friday saturday nights with the scanner at the door we do have um staff at the door on thursday nights as well now i have put that back um and we've just been hiring retraining um and kind of getting things in in line and in, in pace so that everybody's on the same page all day every day with consistent food, consistent service, consistent policies, consistent procedures, um, and things are so far so so good, things are going well. And that's, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Julie, given the past history, and I know um, Frank also briefed you on it, uh, did you volunteer for this job, or you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been with the company for a while now, and um, I've spent a lot of time in all the restaurants I opened um, a lot of them yeah because we're really we're given that you know we're, we're really looking for stability and professionalism absolutely and I think that absolutely. that should be a focus yeah, yeah. Um, and I did have to think long and hard about it I'm from this area and I have a lot of support in this town I have a family and friends and everybody who are around me so um, I'm I'm very glad to be back home and to be back in this area um, but I, I I do know how big of a job this is, um, and in a hundred percent committed to doing the best that I can every day to to make it a great place. Because I I know that you know the other waxes that I worked in are fantastic. This waxes is fantastic, but um, I just don't want to have any other problems, or I don't want to have to come sit in front of you ever again, and just really want to give it my all to. To make it the best yeah, that it can you know, be. Like I said, the, the past history is, is one to ponder and hopefully sharpen your focus and yeah. you know know that it's it sits, still sits it's on the edge. Very serious, okay. yeah. Thanks. Very serious. Just very serious. Um, and just making sure that everybody on a daily basis understands, you know, what we do is so important every day and everything has to be consistent every single day. You know, there's no downtime, there's no fluctuating from everything. It's this is what we do. This, this, this is our job. This is what we do. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like you've definitely taken the proactive steps, hiring that ex-marine and um, taking it serious. Yeah, he's been very helpful so far. Um, you know, s just sees a lot of things. Yeah. You know, and, and, and training people to to see what I see and what he sees is it's difficult because a lot of people don't have that experience where they have eyes in the back of their head and they're, and they're always watching everything that's going around. 
you know, training people to do that is, is, is what we're trying to do. Good. And I think that's the way I've put it, too. He's been very proactive, especially when um, hiring the uh, staff at Thursday nights and using the scanner at the door, which wasn't previously being done because she's trying to be proactive because she's trying to bring in the, the, the Thursday night crowd more. So having the dorm in there before it starts getting too big, she wants to be proactive in that respect. Plus so I think that was a good way of saying it. A lot of work it. of like changing up the bands and the music that we have. Um, all the other waxies that I've, I've been in, you know, Saturday nights when we have bands, it's been more of like an older band. And we've been able to generate that crowd that's coming in and having dinner and staying to dance and have drinks. So we're really taking a, a look at that. We've changed a lot of that just over the past month um, of changing what we're offering for music, what kind of atmosphere that we're offering in the first place. So. Any other questions? Mm, I'm good. Mm. Make a motion to yeah. approve. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the change of manager for Waxy O'Connor's. I'll second that. Any discussion? Vote in the affirmative. Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, it's eight o'clock. I'd like to open the public hearing for Mass Electric National Grid. Okay. Conformity with the requirements of Section 22 of Chapter 166 of the General Laws, Tara Head. You are hereby notified that a public hearing will be held at 120 South Street, Foxborough High School Media Center, in the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, on the 7th day of July, 2015 at approximately 7.50 p.m. Upon the petition of Massachusetts Electric Company doing business as National Grid for permission requesting franchise rights for a transmission line 2288 and 2289 reconductoring project over Wilkinson Way, Cedar Street, Route 106, Norton Street, Washburn Drive, South Street, Faxon Street, Truax Lane, Green Street, Old Green Street, Mechanic Street, Pleasant Street, Cocasset Street, Spring Street, and County Street. Good evening. My name is Jared Ott. I'm an attorney at Bowditch and Dewey representing National Grid. And this is Ann Malley Leno, a representative from National Grid. Uh, as I explained, the company is uh, seeking franchise rights for a transmission line reconductoring over streets in Foxborough as set forth in our petition from June 10th. The project involves the reconductoring of the existing, the two existing tra sub transmission lines with associated structure replacements, as shown on the plan submitted with our petition. This project is being undertaken by the company to address reliability and service issues that have been ex been experienced in Foxborough in the recent years due to the age of the existing line that's in place, um, and will improve both reliability and service for National Grid's customers in the town. Uh, construction is expected to start in April of 2016, and construction will last for approximately eight months. And uh, we're here to answer any questions that you may have to the best. So reconductoring is is another word for rewiring. Right. Okay. New poles. Uh, replacing existing poles with new poles in certain locations, as shown on the plans. Okay. And and as far as disruption to traffic and disruption to the neighborhoods, could you? I'm sure you've done this before. Uh, just give us a sense for what life will be like for the folks who live along those those roads. Well, we will, um, for the main streets, we will be having police details. Um, so, you know, for replacing the poles or whatever, that's usually on the main drags, we have the police details. And, um, you know, we try to make it as minimum disruption as we possibly can. You, you just sort of move in sequence from, from pole to pole? And mm -hmm. Yes. So and we plan on sending out, um, when we get closer to the construction, we'll send out notices and we'll have a telephone number if people have questions as well. But how long would you be in, say, you know, one quarter mile stretch? Oh, it's probably going to take, um, for each pole, it's, you know, we can probably do one pole per day. That's just for setting the pole. And then we have yep. to move all the conductors over um, to the new poles. Okay. And the old poles come down? Yes. Got it. Eventually. Eventually. It's usually at a double pole situation because Verizon and Comcast and everybody else has to relocate their conductors as well after we replace ours. Okay. 
So your, your phase of the project is approximately six months. What's the time frame for Verizon and Comcast and the other carriers to move? I don't know what their construction schedules are at this time. That's something I have to get back with you on. But that's what we do is we notify them once we're complete so they can go be after us and relocate all of their equipment. So upon approval, what's, what's the time frame uh, to start? For us? Yeah. Expected construction start is April of 2016. April 2016. In a six-month process? Uh, six to eight months uh, from eight start months. to finish for both lines. So more than likely it's going to be a two-year process to get all, all your work done, Comcast, Verizon, whatever other carriers are on those poles. More than likely. Yeah, we, yeah, we can only speak for national grid. I mean, we'd like to get the job done within our own fiscal year so we don't go over budget so we have yeah, you well, know Comcast and Verizon they're not setting any new poles I mean that's the, yeah, all they're, they're doing is no, moving yeah. the uh, no, I, the I the understand models. that yeah. you know national national grid owns the poles but it's still it's still coordination it's still got trucks oh. you're still blocking the street they're not gonna they're not gonna be doing it in January and February with, with the snow it's unlikely. unlikely yeah weather if weather permits I mean obviously if we have a mild winter we'll do as much as we can in the winter but weather's going to dictate what we can actually do um, the proposed construction start is in the spring, um, I think, to avoid, uh, to do the best we can to avoid any winter delays or anything like that. During the, uh, re the putting the new lines in, would there be any interruption of services? No. No? Okay. Once um, Comcast and all them move them over, do you guys have a, a schedule of, like, we're going to go back in a month later, two months later, and take the old poles out? Yeah, once we find out, once we know everybody is off, then we, we go back with, it's usually like a contractor we send out to remove all the poles. And what is the typical time frame of that? How soon Depending, and I'm not really sure, because sometimes, um, depending on what's on the pole, um, sometimes they cut the pole, so um, there's just like a small section left, Leave depending on who's, yeah, so that's an easier removal, and so the, the butt, which is the most difficult part um, sometimes they remove that first so all that's left is that small section of pole that has the wires on it and then the last person who's off just takes that pole and um, and then it's done but it may be certain intersections we may have to leave the pole there so it's going to vary depending on what you know if it's a junction pole or where the pole is located I just asked that because when we bought our house I had a, a vacant pole in front of my house for 10 years um, so I really don't want to see that happening. Yeah, that's kind of it, it. It turns into blight if it doesn't. If it's not addressed quickly. And we have um, we have a system that we share with. We're just updating that system now that Verizon is instituting. So we've done a full audit of how many double poles we currently have, and we're going to be managing that. So we they're not left for for yeah. ten years. And um, and obviously, if there are certain locations that need to be addressed immediately. Um, you know, I have my number that people could call and we could address that as soon as possible. One, one, of the, one of the things I would like to see is prior to the start of construction, I would like to see a coordinated schedule mm -hmm. with all the carriers that are on the poles and what their schedule is to be moving because I've run into this time and time again uh, with utilities where you go to one carrier and they say, oh, it's not us, you gotta call them. And then, you, then the phone chase starts. And I don't want the abutters and the neighbors to have to deal with that. I want to be able to put forth a clear and concise schedule so mm -hmm. everybody knows exactly what the time frame is. Mm -hmm. Yep, left, I'll coordinate that with Bill, if that's what you'd like. Yep. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Anybody from the audience? I'm Kevin Weinfeld, 43 Granite Street, and president of Mayfair Realty. And I have no issue with National Grid wanting to recondition the poles and you know put in new service, but I just want to make sure we own about nine acres of that easement on Cocasset Street that goes down by the brook past um, Leonard Street all the way down towards Elm. So, you know, I just want to make sure that any rights of ours as the owners of the of the easement, you know, are retained and there's no issues there, either doing their work or 
anything like that. I'm not sure if it's this hearing or the next one. That that would uh, it would be affected. So I just came up just to, you know, make that statement. That's it. I, I think we're presenting them both together, but yeah. just for the. But Kevin, can you imagine any issues that might no, come up? No, okay. I don't, and I'm happy that they're going to you know that they're going to make the power better for all of us in the town. I'm very happy about that. But you know, just one of those things. It's a piece of land that sits there. The poles are on it. The the, the lines come down there. Yeah, I just want to change you know, any existing easement rights yeah, that okay. we have. That's all. I just wanted to make sure that we were, you know, along together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Pack over 19 Pleasant Street. I just want to know why not all the butters were informed about this meeting. There were people in my neighborhood who were on the streets involved that never got any notices. Uh, I don't think we're aware of that, but maybe you could speak to that. We are not either. We uh, requested a butters list from uh, the town yeah. and were provided with them and we provided the plans along with the butter, a butters list. And No one checked. on my street was involved, Was got, got a notice I did. Well, Mechanic Street didn't. Yeah. Comey Street didn't. So depending on where the, speci the specific line is located, so just because there's a distribution line on your street does not necessarily mean that this specific line. So it's line closer to me than anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> so this line in particular would be closer to you because you're a direct abutter to that line. Uh, but just because there's a distribution line that comes off of this line does not necessarily mean that they would be alerted because that line is not subject to this reconductor. But I am. Yes. Okay. Corbis and my wife and I live on Green Street. Is there any uh, informational packages that describe this project? Uh, we will, when we are close to the construction, we will be putting that out and mailing that to all the abutters. Okay. Um, things like schedule and, and just schedule visual the, impact. Uh, we talk about the same size poles and wires and things. Uh, the, we are increasing the wire size. Okay. And Physically, the poles. And all yeah, that and, stuff. and I think the, it's, it's going to vary depending on mm -hmm. um, where you live and what size pole we're putting in. Okay, it's that kind of thing I'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, we, we will send out an information packet to all the abutters, and we'll also mm -hmm. sit down with, um, with the town and let them know when we get closer um, to the construction Is there schedule. anything on your website? I didn't find anything today. Not for this particular project because it's not going to start until um, next year. Okay, and we'll get this information how? We'll be, sending we'll be mailing that out, out just like um, you got the notice for this meeting. So all the abutters will be getting notifications with the telephone number they can call, and there'll be an information packet on, on what we're actually doing. Okay, thank you. These plans, too, are public records, so there'll be a set of plans that we got at Town Hall if you wanted to look at those. Well, I can come by. Who do I see at Town Hall? You can stop by our office. Uh, you can stop by the yeah. Slepman's office, or the town manager's office. Okay. Uh, in, when you do start the project, you mentioned the website. Will the information be on the website in regard to this particular project? Where, where it's such a varied town that we have, we haven't set up a website just for this. That's why we're just putting the information packet with a telephone number mm -hmm. that they can contact for, for more information. So right as of now, I don't believe we have a special website just for this reconductoring but project. But on your website, could you at least put the phone number in case anyone's interested in this project? You know, I can just, find just out. Put the we could just put a phone number and a contact. Okay, I know. can find out. Um, you know. I'm not, I don't have direct responsibility right. for the website yeah. itself, but I can find, I know like for new substations and things like that, yeah. we okay. usually do a, a special website for, for reconductoring. We normally do not. Right. Uh, perhaps just some general information about what reconductoring means mm -hmm. and the type of work that it involves would be helpful and just to, and just to, and then probably an indication on your website that that work is being done in certain communities um, I know that that work is being done presently in Seekonk mm -hmm. and um, and, I, and it's actually being done on my street right now so I, I'm familiar with the work that's being done it's the, the, the poles are a little bit bigger because they're stronger right now because obviously we live in a different world today with the elements so those poles are a little bit bigger not they're not significantly but but they are bigger uh, because uh, I obviously need they need to be stronger for the for the weight that it carries mm -hmm. so um, but it's I've I've encountered virtually no issues on my street where, where it's uh, where it's been done I can personally attest to that okay. maybe as as we get closer to the start date maybe we can have them come back in for a, sure. not so much a public hearing but just an inform information session right. and an update and maybe um, 
you can pass along information that we can put on on our the town website right. you know for the you know the conducting project you know a preliminary schedule and who to contact is this question right. mm -hmm. yep. so we can add so them to our Facebook page as well yeah. how how far in advance would you want us to calendar that for a month two months before uh, 30 days ahead yeah, of time 30 would days be, would be probably good. good okay great we'll we'll do that yeah. okay. uh, any more comments from the audience I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I've got a question. You had mentioned that because we have a, another scheduled public hearing for this right after this for another. Is this all part of the same? Yeah, it's thing? the same project on two separate lines. Um, so you'll you'll note in the petition that we have two plan sets. Uh, the lines are located in different areas, uh, but all of the butters were notified for each plan set and uh, the the work is the same on both so same program to the location okay do we have to, have yeah, to open, open it, it and, and then close it and the second one close yeah. it okay yeah. now I think as long as um, you know what David said if uh, come up with a, a good construction timeline schedule um, yeah, yeah. With, with your partners in crime mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we allow National Grid to do the reconductoring work on all of the proposed lines. Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we'll open up the second one. In conformity with the requirements of Section 22 of Chapter 166 of the General Laws, Tara Ed, you are hereby notified that a public hearing will be held at 120 South Street, Foxborough High School Media Center, the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, on the 7th day of July 2015 at 8 p.m. upon the petition of Massachusetts Electrical Electric Company doing business as National Grid for permission requesting franchise rights for a transmission line reconductoring of existing 228 and 2289-23 KV sub-transmission lines with additions along Mechanic Street, Pleasant Street, Oak Hill Ave, Comey Ave, Cocasset Street, Clarendon Street, Elm Street, Central Street, County Street, Spring Street, Belcher Court, the Union Loop. Any additional comments? No additional comments. Any comments from the audience? I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion that we, oh, we're gonna do dis any discussion? Yeah? No? Discussion. Okay, I make a motion that we allow National Grid to do the reconductoring on the Union Loop as proposed. Second. All those in favor? Hi. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Being almost 8:20, um, I'd like to call eight, the 810 hearing. Moe's Southwest Grill, 265 Patriot Place, new food establishment, common Victuallers license. Victuallers. Victuallers. Can't get it. Nobody ever Nobody. Say that. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna say common Fiddlers. <laughs> <Right. Exactly. laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not a fiddler. Victuallers no. or victualing. Victualing. For many different. Uh, of course, our standard response should be "Welcome to Mo's." <laughs> <laughs> we hold. Yeah, Which one of you a Mo? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's Larry. I'm Curly. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, Larry and Curly. You're missing the yeah. hair, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he's, already, right? I, actually, I should be Curly. I'm Curlier than he is. Yeah, you know? right. State your name. I'm Joe Besser. Sure. <laughs> there you go. My name is Patrick Kane. I'm the owner of uh, what's uh, Raptor Restaurant Group, which is DB doing business as Mo Southwest Grill, Patriots Place. I'm Jerry Blau, and I'm the director of operations. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I want to give a quick overview. We're obviously up at Patriots Place. We're uh, in between where Carpiati's moved and the Patriots Pro Shop Collectibles area. So five guys, Carpiati's and us, up in that area. Um, we're actually pretty close to done. We're hopefully, hopefully, we'll get our CO by by Thursday. 
knock on some wood somewhere. We'll see. We're, we're getting close. Uh, looking for final inspections that we're looking to open next week sometime. And obviously, we're, we need a common victualler's license, uh, victualling license to, to do that. So we'll apply, and we're here in front of you to answer any questions. Um, from a background perspective, um, I'm actually a practicing attorney. Uh, got into the Dunkin' Donut business probably 14 years ago or so. Uh, own and operate three in Rhode Island, and I've got about 30 down in Florida. Uh, that I operate with a partner down there. Jerry's my director of operations for the three um, Duncans we have in Rhode Island and also Moe's, which we've signed up to do a bunch of those. Probably five, I think, is what we signed up to do. This will be our first. Um, so it's our first experience in uh, what we'll call the, the fresh food area. 20 ingredients uh, you made fresh every day. It's what Moe's is, is known for. So no, refri no uh, freezers there, just refrigerators. And Jerry's experience, I mean, if you want to go through that real quickly from for the-, for the I was in McDonald's for about 33 <clears throat> years. I started as crew member, went all the way up to a franchisee. I own, I used to own the McDonald's in Cranston, Rhode Island. And um, I spent six years with um, Dunkin' Donuts. So now we're about to start the most adventure, <laughs> which we're very excited about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and our VIP party is next week. Yep. On the Pro provided everything goes well today, we get our COP on Thursday, <laughs> next Wednesday. So lunch will be open for a few hours and dinner for a few hours if anybody wants to come by. You'll all be getting an email. Free burritos. Right? <laughs> so we can give our crew the experience of uh, serving customers you're for the first you, time. So. You're looking to open on the 16th, do I have that right? Yeah. Okay. So what kind of a I'm sorry. Sure, yeah. uh, what kind of a restaurant? I mean, what can you describe the? It, it's the like it's what like the a Chipotle. Experience is going to it's be? a it's a similar to a Chipotle. It is probably only a, better. Only better, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, burritos, tacos, stacks, quesadillas. Um, it's all free range, so it's happy chickens, happy cows. Um, well, they were happy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all uh, organic. So there, and it's all fresh. There's 20 fresh ingredients you can choose from. Every item has a, a, a build, but you can <coughs> add whatever you'd like, subtract whatever you like. Okay, so this is strictly food, no uh, Yes, just food. Okay. No alcohol, but. No alcohol, I don't know. No. We've got Coke, you know, the Coke machines and, and uh, iced tea. We have the freestyle 100 flavor thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the lease though, it does call out um, uh, beverages, including wine and beer. We listed that in the case that uh, potentially uh, a license opens up that we might want to do. For the moment, it's our first Moe's. We're not really looking to get into the liquor business at this point in time. Okay. Um, so for now, we're going to open and operate and see how that goes. And part of the conversation we had with the craft group was, you know, at some point in time for Southwest food, beer and wine sometimes works. There's some Moe's that actually have those licenses. Um, we haven't really investigated a whole lot of whether that helps business significantly or not. But uh, being the first one, we wanted to open without it. We put it in the lease to yeah, have the option. It's really. a permitted use in the lease. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Cool. So I wanted to put it in there just in case, but we're not asking for that now. We're not, okay. we're not moving forward with it. At some point, we might, but we're not, we're not at that stage yet since okay. it's a new venture for us from uh, the Moe's perspective. Okay. So. Good. Yeah. So I mean, if we did at some point want to do it, do we need to come back? Yeah. 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 We issue the licenses, so you'd have to come and make a pitch for why you needed it and sure, how sure. you're going to handle it. Yep. So, but if it's in the distant future, it's not even a consideration. We won't worry right. about it. Right. Yeah. It's no, I, I do own and operate as well a, a full liquor license restaurant in North uh, Northboro, uh, okay. called Lemoncello's. So I'm, I've got experience with being a uh, holder of license so you, you and know, you know the insurance process, and yeah. tips and all the other stuff. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. So I've got experience doing that. I just for this particular venture, we wanted to get open and operating and see how it worked. It's really uh, what we're seeing in Patriot Place is a whole lot of families. Um, you know, and we. Uh, um, it, it's a, it, it looks like it's going to be a great spot for us, we hope. So. The place in North was a great place, by the way. I'm sorry? The yeah, place in North was a great place. Uh, yeah, it's a, well, yeah, we've, we've operated now for about a year. So it's, uh, it's done very well. we've, we've turned it around, we think, yeah. pretty well. So, uh, um, That's great. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a constancy when you, when you deal with restaurants, as you guys know. You're so waxy in here. You know, things can slip up pretty quickly, and you, know, you need folks who are there. And Jerry's been with me six years now, and he's done a phenomenal job you know, running the Dunkins. And this is a, a new venture he's uh, taken with Gusto, and, and we have both. And we're excited about it and hope uh, we can do well over there. Okay. Great. When are you, um, you said you're opening five of these? We're slated open five, sort of from Hingham all the way back to here. Okay. It's kind of there's a you know brain tree. We've got sort of so most gives you like a territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. they did. And there's uh, how many they think it open this year? Eighty, maybe something like that. They're opening um, sixty-five in this calendar year, but they're going to open eighty-eight next year. Well, so they're under a thousand, but they're over seven hundred at this point. So they they continue to grow. Is this um, a national national chain? Yes. Yeah, they're based out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, 
difference with us is uh, free, free chips and salsa, <laughs> yeah, as opposed to it's a little less expensive on the average check. So when you bring a family and it's not 50 or 60 bucks, it can be a little bit less than that. So, um, great, great. Any more questions? No, no. Other than say good luck and. Uh, I'll take, Thank you. I'll take my son up there because he'll eat you out of house and home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get a, he'll my, get a burrito the size of his arm, literally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Most yeah. people don't finish it. They take half home. <clears throat> get a home record. My kids, my kids all eat half for lunch and half for dinner. Right, the ones out in Denver, they're all one in Burlington, <clears throat> that sort of thing. So it's interesting. And that was, that was one of the reasons why we get, we get interested in it. All the kids know it, not necessarily the adults. It's really kind of an interesting uh, concept. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And do we motion? need to make a motion? Yep. Can you, can you get that word right? Yeah, common okay. victual is the Don't, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to say it. Um, <laughs> he gets a free burrito for that. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the common victuals license application exactly. for Raptor Restaurant Group LLC doing business as Moe's Southwest Grill. And I'll second that and Thank best you. of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any discussion? Well, appreciate, it. appreciate it. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck, guys. Yeah, pass those out. Those are, those are the free Thanks. burritos right there. Right on the back of the business card. Thank you. Sign, it'll try the first one on Look. Okay. Hey, I have a question for you. Dunkin' sure. Donuts, Moe's, and other restaurant. What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> I practice law. I actually make practice flower pots for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. 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 He doesn't sleep. I used to not sleep. He lets me sleep a little bit. There you go. There you go. So, Good luck, right. guys. Thank you very Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Foxborough. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see, 825, we're catching up, Bill. Uh, 820, William Keegan, uh, discussion on common sign program. Right, well, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, the, uh, this was, I, we purposely put this on because we knew this was an ongoing concern um, that, the, uh, that was raised to us by a friend in the audience th this evening. And, uh, and while we certainly appreciate it, we, we want to make sure that we addressed it appropriately. Um, and so we, what we've done is that we've we've actually solicited the help of a, a senior senior on the tax senior tax work off program, that she who's taken over uh, this responsibility, and we've we've taken it away from DPW because there were just too many competing issues for them to deal with that on a regular basis. So um, this person is assigned on a weekly basis to change the sign. They they work out of our office, um, so that, so any any changes to the sign are actually referred to our office now. Um, and therefore, we just we, we provide the information to that person, and then the changes get made. So, as of this moment, as of yesterday, I checked the sign; and everything was up to date, near, near as I can see. Um, if anything does get out of out of out of date, we certainly we're going to keep keep a close eye on that. But we have uh, making made regular change. We, we will be making regular changes to the board on a weekly basis now. Do we have somebody so. that's uh, alternate? Uh, we haven't been able to secure an alternate yet. Uh, but uh, in the event that that does occur, we can certainly, uh, we can either our office or someone, uh, we're, we're familiar with how we can change the board as well in our office. So whenever that occurs, we can certainly uh, pick up the slack. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's, that's the lifeblood of information people going through the town. So. No, that's right. That's right. So now, is sure. one um, person going to be able to do that job? You know, the, the uh, covers on hinges and it. Can be kind of hard to close. Right. We we actually well we well, that was a concern to us initially, and so we went out and actually tried it um, with this person. That person seems to be handled pretty well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Actually, I think it belongs at town hall. Uh, I know it was historically with DPW for who knows why, but uh, well, the requests come directly to yeah, us. Yeah, the information right. comes so to it's us. One so less step in the exactly. process. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Things yeah. Want, want are less likely to get lost in the shuffle, so to speak, mm -hmm. and. Well, and nobody intentionally tries to do that. I think that there's a case of, I mean, for instance, in, in the previous instance, there was a person that was actually out for a number of weeks, and that, and that responsibility didn't get pushed on to someone else. So now we, we know where the, the issues come to. We'll deal with it, and we'll stay on top of it. And if any questions come to us, if somebody's, something doesn't seem right, they can come directly to us, and we'll, we'll address it. So if that person doesn't show up on a Monday morning, you and Mary Beth yeah, will we'll, be up we'll there. Yeah, we'll go out there yeah. and actually right. be out there. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. I'm in circles <laughs> checking <laughs> it yesterday. No, I think it'll be Deb. Deb and <laughs> Deb, Deb, Deb's Marsh, already done Deb, it Deb once. Deb and Marsh are actually <laughs> are out there making the changes. So, so we, we're, we're going to keep it up to date. Um, it seems to be working so far so good. So That's let's good. keep our fingers crossed. And I'd just like to give a shout-out to our senior work-off person. His name is Kenneth Travis, and he's 
Marcia and I interviewed him two weeks ago. He was delightful and good. excited and up to the task. Good. Okay. Good. Enjoys, enjoys sure that's, a, that's a good resolution. Good that's resolution. Right. Yeah. Let's make sure we get somebody to back him up, though. Yeah, quite, you know, we actually, we think, the thing is, the problem is, is that if we use another tax work-off program for that person, for that, it, 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 it may not happen that often for that person. So, yeah. um, so for the amount of times it's going to be a problem, I mean, we really, we can serve as the backup. It's, as long as fine. there's a plan in place. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand, yeah. That's all, all I'm asking. Yeah, I understand. Okay. And it could be a future opportunity for an intern as well. Right. Um, yeah, we've talked about that, too, because communication, public communication, to the community as as a whole is a is problematic for us as a town and I and I think not that it's just that we don't have the capacity for doing it. We have plenty of people that are willing, plenty of people that want to, but we don't have somebody that's dedicated to just doing that on a regular basis. So we're trying to figure out a, a creative way to resolve that either uh, by securing the service of a, of a communications intern, a student that's in college that, that focuses on communications. That can actually help us with Facebook, Twitter, uh, fa uh, up, uh, updates on the website, sign uh, notices, things of that nature, so we can actually get a, a consistent basis of, of information out there. Everyone. Yep, that day's coming. Yeah. yeah. Good. We're at that point, I think. Especially, you know, you look at the smart cities, smart towns. That's that's the wave of the future. That's mm -hmm. right. It's how they're getting the information out. That's there. right. We, we, media. Well, we live we live in a in an instantaneous <coughs> society where everybody wants information as it happens. Mm -hmm. So we we have to be cognizant of that and we have to address it. You know, we do have we do now have a Facebook page. We are we are, we the police department is working off of Twitter now. So we we are taking steps to address that, but we're still not there yet. But we're making progress. So that that's all I had for that. I, I um, I'll just mention to you too that. One of the other concerns that we see in the common area is is the age of the flagpole. The flagpole's been there for, I don't know, can you, can you tell us, Jack, how long that's been there? Pretty close to 100. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah nearly 100 years. So um, we'd love to get it painted, but the, the problem is that the, 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 the mechanics in the, pole, in the pole itself are now dysfunctional. Yeah. So we, we're now looking at the prospect of replacing it. I'd be worried about safety too. Something right. 100 years old. Right. That's a big pole. Right. So we're looking at the prospect of replacing it, and we're, we're now secure, trying to secure prices of what it would take to do that. And then once we have that number, we'll look, we'll start looking at how we can fund it, uh, either through mitigation issues or through uh, public uh, fundraising efforts. Or uh, and I think a lot of people would rally around that cause because it's such a focal point of, of the. You have a ballpark. I mean, I looked at poles that size. The pole itself, seven or eight grand, maybe. Yeah. Um, but then there's the whole. The mechanics it, and mechanics. Putting it pole. all in and taking it out. Right. I actually had a, a scout approach me, wanting my opinion on doing a new flagpole there for his Eagle project. I said it's a huge undertaking. Right. Um, no, they're so, expensive. I mean, yeah. they, they go exponential the higher you go. Yeah. 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 So Roger I. Hill was researching it. He's for researching us. it for us now. Yeah. So we. Um, we Can hope to have an, uh, a number on that pretty soon. Could we measure it? How what it would? How many inches it would be for a full pole, and then sell certificates by an inch? You know, people can donate, get a certificate. They own an inch of the flight pole. That makes great Christmas gifts, Father's Day gifts. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> you could do something kind of cool and creative. Mm. Um, Jack, what have? What are your thoughts on the pole? Do you want to come up and sit at the table? How tall is the existing pole now? Well, uh, generally speaking, they worked with a 100-foot pole. But there have been times when they had to take like 8 or 10 feet off the bottom because of Rocks. conditions of the metal and so yeah, forth yeah. and drop it down. That's and, uh, different repairs. For a long time, they had a... Um, well, right from the start, they were, they were working with old uh, ship masts. So they were imitating that, and they had uh, uh, a cross bar, and uh, they had to always drop the top part of it during storms and things like that. It, it was yeah. it, it was dicey. Yeah. Uh, so they, uh, they they finally settled on the um, on the metal, and I I, I would point out um, 
On Memorial Day, when uh, Mr. Giatani was recognized for painting the town squares, mm -hmm. that day he got a, a look at the flagpole, and uh, within a matter of hours, we had an offer to paint, it. paint the flagpole. <laughs> but uh, of course, in closer examination, there's, there's, there's more of a challenge there. And I, I think that um, first and foremost, always has to be safety. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 certain things are a little more expensive than the others, but in the long run, yeah, that that's yeah, and with that being hundred years it, it's, old, it's the safety. The and uh, what can we get uh, in in terms of usage? But I, I think one advantage is if it was clearly identified to us that the best process would to follow would be to replace it. You could get it designed and ready, have it all fabricated, laying there ready to go, have a base all made and ready to install, so that taking down the old one and reinstalling the new one give you, would give you the shortest downtime of all. Uh, take one down, immediately put the base in for the new one, and pretty soon up we go. Uh, I mean, th th that is, the flag in the center is so much a part of this community. Um, you hate to think of even a brief period of time without one, but, but of course we have to. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I think that clearly, you know, nobody questions mm -hmm. the value and, and uh, the tradition of having it there. Uh, right. it, it has been... Uh, Unbelievable challenges at different times with the uh, lightning and decay and uh, other kinds of problems. And uh, uh, when the uh, first uh, flagpole started to deteriorate, the uh, original bandstand was built around it and that got shattered in the process. And I mean, those are pretty dark days. <laughs> um, yeah. we, we're, we're beyond that. Yeah. But, uh, but we got a real challenge here. And uh, I, I think to, to put this out to the community as a long-term view of getting something up there that that our kids and grandkids aren't going to have to worry about right away. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a big advantage to it. Yeah, the, the new poles, they're, they're composite fiber. They don't even they don't even have to paint them. Yeah. They'll stay that way for, for a good long period of time, and they're pretty sturdy too. So. Yeah. Um, and as long as the... Um, you know the ground is is fine they're relatively easy to install um, mm -hmm. i mean i put one in with with two other guys it was a 40-foot pole we did it you know very easily um, that's right it is actually um, <laughs> um i don't know if it could come down and go up in one day it might be a, a two or three day job yeah worst case less we than could, a week probably. we could put all the flags around the common for that period, yeah, so absolutely. there's, there's absolutely. something there. Well, it keeps yep. the flags up. Yeah. Yes, and I, and I think, too, I, I, I think the community would be happy to be caught up in the excitement of this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to set uh, goals too far ahead, but this could be one of our first major projects toward our 2028 celebration of our mm -hmm. 250th year. Right. Well, I hope we have it done before 2028. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping we do too. <laughs> this is yeah, number one in the start, process yeah. of all the things yeah. we'd like to have done by that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we could have it done by Flag Day of next year, Would it, or is that too short a time period? Personally, well, it, I think it really. There, 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 it yeah, be. it's it's a matter of securing the funding. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a matter of um, we. Um, and Jack's point about you know let's you know, we we've we've evaluated we we should we should have it evaluated to make sure that that is the right course of action. Um, I think you know mo generally speaking, I think that's the preferred course at this point. But we want to look, make sure, take a look and make sure. But having said that, there is um, you know we, we I think it could be a great rallying cry for the town to absolutely you know, to focus to focus on getting this done. And make it a community-wide project yeah. that um, could gain some some pretty quick notoriety. Uh, I, th I think it is is so so essential. It's such a good investment to involve the community because everybody's excited about it. Every, everybody's watching the progress, and right. and one good thing uh, begets another. And uh, mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden you need more support. And it's amazing what people can do and will do right. when, when they want to make a, make a difference here. And uh, the more people that can feel a part of this, the greater the appreciation, and uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to maintain it over the years. Well, I think the more that people become part of it, they take ownership of it. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that becomes a different, uh, yeah. different element of yeah. consideration no, for the whole um, project. Well, who's, uh, who's spearheading the effort? I mean, who is, who's going to own this? I mean, if it's well, the town ultimately owns it, right? No, no, no. Yeah, but who's going to spearhead have a, the project? You have a champion. You yeah. have someone that yeah. spearheads the project. Well, well, that's something we can we can work on. Uh, we can uh, and, and try and get some folks together to figure that out. Have they come up with well, a theme for Founders Day for next year? The new flag ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I I, I think that um, we have proven over and over again. If we demonstrate to the people of Foxborough, there is a need. Yeah. Step back. Mm -hmm. Here they come. Yeah. Yep. They will do something. I agree. But that 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 process of bringing the people in is is critical. But I, I think it it almost uh, I, I don't know something is magnitude with some of the issues involved. Um, it might have to be a town project with. With local support, in other words, could people be sponsors? I like Jenny's but idea of selling sections of it. To I was going to say, instead of selling bricks, you sell a so yeah, many inches of flagpole, yeah. or even yeah. feet. A, a right. foot of the yeah. pole yeah. would be because uh, that's yeah. how how big, how tall is that pole? Do you know, Jack Offhand? Well, I I, th I think it was intended at the start to be a hundred feet. Hundred feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just take the cost and then divide it by the whatever. Mm. Yeah. You can buy multiple certificates. But uh, I, I, I think, too, uh, that any denomination. if you could break it down so that it's reasonable, individuals yeah. 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 Could, could feel part of it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's important to have individuals contribute. I mean, that's the same thing that happened with the, with the fence. All, it all has the paid enormous dividends to this community time and time again. Mm. Yeah. And there's we, other things besides, I mean, to take down the existing one that wall is going to have to come down the planter around it right so there's other things that can be funded rebuilding the wall or yep. if that's what we want to do and you know maybe make it a little bigger bigger planting area um yeah, who and knows? there might be a local business that would love to take that particular yeah. pot on if uh, if it came to that yeah. that's good good suggestion okay yeah, yeah. I think it's something that requires uh little bit more research right we, we, I think the first order business to find out what we're what we're talking about in terms of a cost and also evaluating the poll itself to see what what, what should be done but um, I, I just think that and, and, and Jack and I talked earlier about this that the, the new materials that are coming out with these oh. days are, are far more superior than the material that's there and, and this Absolutely. is not it's no longer exposed metal it could be something that's yeah. uh, much more weather resistant mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. That's where we're at. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jack. Great. Thank you, Jack. Right. Thanks, Jack. Already, thank you Thanks. for the opportunity. <laughs> okay, almost 8.45. Uh, take the 8.30 agenda item. 16 Washington Street, LLC, discussion vote, commercial parking permit, lot 16. Do we just simply need to re-vote this with a different number? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, this was approved with the additional uh, spaces of... I think it was 44 additional spaces, if I'm not. So the planning board has increased the capacity? 40. Uh, where is it? It's now. Was 133. It was 133, and I believe. Going to 177. 170, so it's 44 spaces. Yep. So we just vote to approve 44 additional spaces for that lot? Or do we have to do it for the 173? Do we have to undo the, the 133? I would take a motion to um, to the 177 uh, withdraw, withdraw the, the, the you know, withdraw the approval of the one, uh, one, one one thirty three and then make a motion to approve it with one seventy seven. Okay. Um, make a motion that we withdraw the previous vote on June thirtieth of one hundred and thirty three spots for. Lot 16. Lot 16. Second. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Uh, make a motion that we approve lot 16 for 177 parking spaces. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and we discussed um, last last meeting um, at Dave's suggestion adding on the lower right hand corner the number of um, license spaces slash the number of like employee spaces and that was going to be um, I guess Ed was going to talk to run that by the um, parking lot owners but but ultimately we had decided it was going to be in the regulation is that in the regulation now? I'm, I'm sorry. I was reading the, the actual the, the approval here. I, I, I just uh, I I, wa I just want to caution the board. I, I just think that in looking at the the decision, it actually says that. Uh, let me see findings and then what what is the the actual decision? Conditions of approval. I thought it, it, it looks like it was 186 spaces. No. I thought originally it was 177. If you take a look at the what was approved by the planning board, that's obviously the guiding, doc, guiding document here. And it says here not more than 123 vehicles should be parked during any single state event. I think that the, the safest course of action would be to. Uh, I think the additional ones there were employee parking the, spots. He's added on. He's doesn't he have um, this is. This is like more land he's he's cleared, and this is 123 extra spaces. So this says 186 parking spaces allowed on the property. Yeah. And and the the planning board had to approve the expansion, and this is what the, they approved the expansion through this. Right, but I'm just looking for the exact number. It doesn't say. I thought it said somewhere in there out of the 186. X amount were for Dunkin' Donuts patrons. Okay. Is nine, 54 spaces for stadium seven. event parking, nine spaces reserved for Dunkin' Donuts. Excuse me, was it Deb? What did you That's what was your nine? His 177 plus nine is 186. So 177. the way we voted it was correct. Yeah. 177. Okay. For stadium yeah. events. Yeah. 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 So it is 177. Yeah. Deb? Okay. Yeah, okay, great. Paid for. Right. And that's all he can legally live. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, and going back to your your question, well, we Jim? remember um, we we talked about the when we were going through the regulations, and Dave suggests that uh, on the signs, the individual lot owners note the, at, at the right bottom right hand corner with magic marker the uh, number of license spaces, say 175 license spaces, and then slash 25 say they're going to use that for their employees so when you look at the sign you go okay the first number is the licensed that's how many li licensed spaces they have and then right. gee this 25 for our employees are uh, customers and um, we wanted that put in the regulation so I'm wondering was it actually put in the regulation um, was it revised once again it was not I can tell you know and I don't I, I obviously I didn't I completely forgot about that to be honest with you but I will say this that I'm not sure if we want to use a magic marker. I think you want well, to be able that, to. Whatever, I, want to I think you want. Yeah, I think you want to have know. a standardized sign. Right. It should, right. Should, be a, should be a standardized sign. Right. right. Jenny, that, you that, something that, like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like that. But I mean, I mean, I'm yeah. using magic yeah. marker, but whatever it, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 the reason I say it is because we don't want something to be changed from week to week. Right. right. It yeah. should be a standardized sign that right. everybody gets to use. It was been approved for a parking lot, so that we don't have. People just putting any sign out. It should be a standardized sign that's been, that's so as approved right. by the town. Well, the regulation just says it needs a sign, a certain size sign with the, right. the number on it. It doesn't say that they all have to okay. be the same, but that may be something that the town has to issue. We should probably issue a standardized sign for that, for that because it, yeah. yeah, and then the way it's something that's we put, the, yeah. we put the numbers in there. Right. No idea if there is ever an inspection or audit. It's uh, right. obvious what the number is. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, that's the problem. Like with with Greg Spear place, he has he has in his Mayfair parking lot. He and excuse me, Greg, for using it as an example, he has x you know, say 100 license spaces, but he has tenants. Mm -hmm. He may have like 35 spaces that belong to the tenants. So you could go in there and see there's 135 cars parked, 
and they are packed all legally, but 130, uh, 100 of those are licensed, and the well, other the remains are, are his tenants. And the tenants can park there and walk up to the gate. Right, so, exactly. Yeah. 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 Correct. So we will follow up with that, that piece of it to uh, uh, make sure something's included in the regulations for that because um, we can take a vote on that. I thought that was actually a good we suggestion to, to so that we so that we go to check the, the audit, yeah, at least people it's cl it's clear it, upon for the inspector who goes in there and checks it that uh, this is the number that's been approved. Yeah. Deb, we voted on that last Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And you withdrew the other one okay. and, uh, so you're you're your motions. Your motion is fine. Okay. 8.50, uh, town manager update. Um, just a, a, a couple small things. Uh, like they're not small in, 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 in terms of responsibilities, but um, in terms of numbers. Uh, we're meet, uh, Mary Beth and I are meeting with the planning board this Thursday to, uh, to discuss the replacement of uh, the town planner's position, Sharon Watson's position. Um, and we intend to have a conversation about which direction we'd like to go in going forward. Um, and so we're going, to, we're going to be respectfully, we've been respectful of uh, some time to pass before we took action on this, but uh, certainly now we want, to, we want to move forward to, to, uh, to fill that vacancy. And uh, if this may be an opportunity, and, and, and I, I certainly want to have this conversation with the, with the planning board, I've, is that there is, now that we do have a master plan, that perhaps now is the time to start incorporating ideas of economic development into the next position. And, um, and community development ideas and things of that nature. So we want to have that conversation with the planning board. But I want be, before I did that, I wanted to make sure you, this board was aware of that and whether or not you were supportive of that, of that approach. Um, How are you making out on people stepping up for economic development committee? We, we're, we're doing well on that. And I'm actually, I think we're going to, um, I'm, I, I believe at the next meeting I should be able to present you a list of, of, uh, of all the, 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 uh, the people that are concerned. We, we have, um, I want to say, we're about eight or nine candidates at this point that have, that have applied. So, so I think we're in good shape that way. So, um, but I think now, uh, one of the legacies that uh, Sharon left us was was a, was a master plan, okay. which is now your roadmap for how the town should be developed going it forward. It makes sense, man. If you if you're looking for someone now to execute the plan rather exactly. than build it, right? Um, somebody with an economic development background would be helpful right mm -hmm. somebody that can help marshal us through the, some, of the, some of those steps um, at the same time a common thing it's a you know, planning and economic development director okay. a community development director that, um, you know I think just planning alone is um, is is a step that was vitally important uh, in Sharon's role but now that that's, that plan has been developed now's the time to let's go to the next next level and I, um, and that's the kind of conversation I want to have with the with the planning board. Yeah, the uh, implementation is just loaded with with pitfalls and roadblocks. Absolutely. And all different uh, scenarios that you know you, you need somebody with experience that can kind of maneuver th through that minefield. Right, and and at this point in time, it's difficult to to actually hire two people to do that job. But certainly, there's somebody that has uh, you know respect for both sides of of that uh, equation would be, I think, very helpful to us. But the position is still going to be town planner. Yes, okay. it'll be town planner, but it could be, but the title could be different. It could be planning and economic development director. Mm -hmm. it could be community development director. It could be you know any one of those. Okay, so that's the direction so you're looking forward to. That's, get from that's right. That's the, that's the kind of and the planning board. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I think that's that's what I'm contemplating, and that's what I'd like to talk to the board about to see how they feel about that. But, um, but I think that's uh, in it, in and that's purely out of. The position that Sharon put us in, and I think that I think we have an obligation now as a community to stand behind the plan that she helped that helped us develop with the planning board, to uh, and, the, and the community that adopt, that's, adopt, that's accepted that, to, to now take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And what better legacy could you leave than to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and things are starting to happen. I was at Water and Sewer last night, and the right. um, the gentlemen who are planning to do the hotel. Fox Hill Plaza we're in to talk about you know mm -hmm. different issues and um, so things are starting to happen when you right. once you get that sewer in it, it's going to start so right. the sooner we get someone on board you know the, the better off the town will be yeah right. well, I think yeah. it's a good idea 
So, and you know, they, I think the you know, regardless of what direction we're going to do, we're going to work very closely with that person, um, and along with the planning board, the ZBA, and all the different boards that, and the conservation commission, and all the different town boards that have a lot to say about how development will occur here so we can be consistent with how that plan is being implemented. Mm -hmm. So now's a great opportunity to, to look at that. Um, and um, even as unfortunate it was, you know, how it occurred. So um, the second thing is that we, we, did, um, we did start a new fiscal year as of July 1. So we are uh, moving fast to try and get everything in place. We've got everything uh, on, a, on a financial basis, we're in great shape. There's no no reasons to be concerned there, but um, there's a lot of lot of work to be done. Wrapping up one fiscal year, going into a new fiscal year, uh, the finance department has been working uh, a lot of extra hours just to get stuff lined up. And then, um, and then, just uh, this morning, I met with uh, Representative Barrows um, relative to what's happening at the state budget level. They do not have a final budget yet. Uh, there is still Disagreement at the legislative level, along with I, I'm not sure if the governor's uh, involved with this disagreement, but there is still disagreement at the uh, as to how taxation will work going forward. So there's that still has to be worked out, but they haven't they have an interim budget in place, so uh, government will not stop. I mean we're going to continue to move forward, but um, they're confident that it'll get figured out. But I just um, right now there's no final numbers out of the state, and that's um, it's unfortunate because you know we usually like to start the fiscal year with a with everything finalized, but we'll 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 get there. I'm, I'm pretty confident we will. And then, um, and, and I was just going to follow up on the, on the new development proposal that's uh, that is before the town um, with the uh, Foxfield Plaza. There is a uh, new hotel planned for that that location. Foxfield Furniture would would effectively come down as a building. Um, the the the, uh, the plaza itself will be revamped and. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of new pad sites that will be the uh, restaurants or a bank site. Um, so th that area of development is uh, is imminent. I, I, at this point, there are still some some board approvals that need to be finalized and some steps that need to be taken in the process. But the the, the development developer who is interested in developing that site is very serious about about making this happen. So um, I've had the experience of working with this particular developer in another community and. Um, and contest to the fact that he was everything he said he was going to do, he did. So I had a very good experience with him. So, um, so I'm, I'm pleased to see that he's involved in this particular project. Now that's putting board this Thursday night. Uh, it's the, I'm not sure if they're going to discuss that this week or not. It's still it has to go to ZBA, uh, and I'm not sure if if they're if they're going to be talking about it this night. But okay. uh, but I am going to be at the planning board meeting on um, uh, Thursday night. Anyways, Mary Beth and I are both going to be to, to talk about uh, the the planner's position. Excuse me, did anybody else want to go? Because I had planned on going. Yeah, I, I, think I, had, go. I think we should post this. Too late to post? Um, yeah, I, I, think I think it is, unfortunately. This is Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday, it's Thursday. So, so I'm not going. I'm going to be on the common, listening to the concerts on the yeah, common. I'm there not going. Go. I'm going to be out of town. So. Jim's on vacation, so it's oh, only okay. two of you. Oh, oh. Okay. Sorry. All right. And then, uh, Mary Beth, do you have anything you want to um, talk about? Just that we're going to start to discuss warrant articles soon for a fall town meeting. Uh, start putting forth a list of you know things we held off from last time. Put them before you um, to see where you want to. We'll run the list through the way we did before. Vet it through town council once the articles are written. Um, so we're going to start that process probably in August. Right. And finally, I just wanted to congratulate Mike Johns on completing the Suffolk. Um, MMA uh, graduate certificate in municipal leadership. Um, it's a 29 week, five graduate course program, and he graduated with honors. And mm -hmm. Bill and I attended his graduation, so that was two weeks ago. And uh, I know how hard he worked because I did that program, and it's not easy. So. Yeah, he did a great job. Uh, yeah. So um, that's a, a great program, that, and, I, and uh, anybody who's graduated from that program has, has actually done very, very well beyond there. So um, it's sort of like the next generation of leaders. And, and, there, and there, we talked about this today because there, there are so many different disciplines in, in local government that don't have any kind of leadership uh, training. There's, there's technical training in, in your particular uh, uh, discipline, but not in, the, in leadership per se. 
And so this is really a great program because it teaches all aspects of leadership as well as uh, some of the specifics of general management principles. And um, anybody who goes through it uh, learns an abundant amount of, of information which they never thought was even there. So it just, it just uh, helps mold our, our future leaders. I'll congratulate him next time I see him. Yeah. yeah. I did last week, and he was like, that's eh, no big deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was. It, is, it is a big that's deal. That's how Mike is, though. Yeah, yeah. Mike's, and, yeah, and Mike was, Mike's you know, pretty humble when it comes to those kind of things, but I will tell you that it is a big deal yeah. um, to, to pass that program. So congratulations to him. Yeah. Mike is a yeah. phenomenal leader. Mm -hmm. right. And, 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 speaking, uh, of, oh, and okay. speaking of Mike John. Um, there will be on August 4th, we have on the agenda uh, another Purple Hat recognition. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, ceremony they for know? August 4th. Right. That That's too bad that all the same ceremony we had before. That on a small scale. Okay. That uh, National Night Out is on That's the same August same 4th. Night, yeah. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. And then um, there's a follow up issue that uh, we, we we're trying to put up the various local signs and, and support signs that we have for all the various JCs and groups. Um, civic groups that, that support this community, which are, does do a phenomenal job. But one of the things that um, I think we've got to give some real serious thought to, and that's this concept of of um, of um, um, gateway. Gateway. Thank you. <laughs> gateway signs, which we don't have really well displayed in the community. So, coming from another community into Foxborough, we have signs, various signs located, but we don't have a standardized look that we'd like that, that I think we should look look at as a, as a community to you know something that really is a special look like a with a with a like a, a granite type post with a nice wood carved sign with you know a painted sign with with uh, gold lettering you know something that understated it, elegance yes understated <laughs> elegance. so, so it is to is to provide and I think we thought we talked about this the, the village look the village. Village. you know which which re, which is something that well we know we're, we're more than a village but it still really gets us, brings us back to our historic roots, mm -hmm. and I think you know there you can you can display the gem of Norfolk County, you know, um, you know the various you know home of the you know, the New England Patriots, you know, you, you can put any, any one of those things down there, and you can put the you can put the uh, and the various civic organizations that support us, and um, you can do do it really really. But there's different companies that do this, and so I want to look at this, but again another community type project. That people can rally around because there's like six or seven different locations that we might be able to to locate this in, and um, it, it really it sets those communities apart when you when you have that. You come off of 140, and sometimes you don't even know you're in Foxborough. You come off of you know 495. You know there's no into, from Mansfield into into Foxborough. There's no real sign that says you're in Foxborough in many ways. Um, so I'm for it, but I would just be a little cautious. You you get a hand carved sign that'll end up in somebody's room or basement. Mm -hmm. Some kid will steal it, or you know. Um, so I thought our citizens were better than that. Yeah, I mean, some OPR citizens. The one that, that spray That's painted right. the the sign at the end of this driveway right after it was put up. I mean, yeah. so you just got to be careful. I mean, I'm all in yeah. for. I've seen it. You're going into a community, you know, has all the the high school sports mm -hmm. champions and stuff right, like exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in looking at some designs and stuff. Yeah, something that's it's real secure. It's something yeah. that you know, and if you know, um, it, it's it's sort of a, a local pride thing. You yeah. know that, that I think people can rally around. But I'd like to see us pursue that a little bit more if if, yeah. if people support that concept. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, some action items. Yep. Okay, we have four action items. First one from the Foxborough Historical Commission. Make a motion we approve the gift donation from various donors of $75 with gratitude for the soldier statue. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next one is also Foxborough Historical Commission. We make a motion for the approval of the gift donation of $640 from various donors with gratitude for maps, books, etc. In the 75, the total 715. You're gonna do this part too, but I didn't. Oh, didn't I? Didn't we do the first one? All right. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. Yep, you yeah. did. You did. Yep. And then. All right. So well, the second sec one is for 640. Yeah. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Third, 
Bay Colony Production slash the Orpheum Theater to make a motion for the approval of a one-day beer and wine permit for Talzel Top Orchestra, July 11th, 2015, 7.30 to 11 p.m. Um, I'll second it. Discussion? Is this the first? Is this the first? This is be being uh, organized by Chris Lowy. Have they done this before? Yeah. Do you need do you recall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Fourth one from the planning department. Make a motion. We approve the gift donation to the Sharon Wasson Memorial Fund of a thousand dollars from Douglas and Claire King with gratitude and thanks. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. All right. But just uh, for the update, folks, on that we do have a design, uh, some design specifications that we've been working on. Uh, we're looking to finalize those this week, and then uh, hopefully get some prices on what it would cost to, to build that. Do you know how the funding is going so far? I don't have Together. an update on that. That's uh, okay. that's actually being handled by uh, Tracy. Is Tracy Vasily? Isn't yeah. she leading that? Yeah, Tracy's I think Tracy is leading, leading on that. Yeah. So I know that she's been she's been out there working it. So. Okay. All right. Take a motion to adjourn. Motion we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.